Hello, this is the first in a series of videos about rigging game characters in Maya. In this first video I'm going to show you a rig from the Goblin Abyss, which is an RPG game I'm currently developing for iPhone and iPad. It's for mobile, so the characters are low res, but the rig controls can be as complex as you like, and there's no reason it can't have all the controls a movie rig would have. As long as the end result is a character deformed by nothing more than a few joints, there is nothing stopping you from making complex movie style rigs for mobile games. So this is the goblin from the game. It's for iPhone, so he's pretty low res. He's about 1200 triangles, something like that. He has a pretty standard bipedal rig, so I have a, a main, main root control. His spine is a spline IK setup, so I can translate and rotate both the, both the upper body as well as the hips, totally independent of each other. This of course gives him stretching ability, so I built a little gauge into the back so I know how far I'm stretching him. His legs have IK forward K switching. The IK foot can stretch as well. And the actual foot control is a, it's a, it's a pretty standard reverse foot. He's got a, a ball bend which uh, rolls the foot back onto the heel. I can also twist the foot. Zero that. I have side to side controls. I can go up onto the toe. I can twist on the toe. And of course you can wiggle the toes. I can also turn on forward K controls. and blend between them. Just gonna turn those off for now. The arms are also pretty similar to the legs. They have a IK forward K. At the moment they are in forward K. Just have a clavicle control as well, I can rotate. And the arms also have this orbit control. I find it very handy for doing lots of sword swinging animations. And the head control can rotate as well as translate. But it also has local global switching as well as the arms. So at the moment if I rotate the body, you see his arms and his head pretty much stay aligned with the world. But I can turn that off if I want to. So now the head follows the body. He also has a few extra little controls. Flap his loincloth around while he's running. And he also has a shadow built into the rig. The shadow will follow follow his body. They'll always be below his hips. I also have a control I can override that with if I want to. And because this, this is for mobile, I added in the sword trail into the rig. I find this works much faster when trying to get it to work on the iPhone. But these are Little controls, I can pose the trail. Now if we quickly open up the hypergraph, you can see this rig, there's a lot to it. It's too complicated for a game engine, especially when I'm going to mobile. I have lots and lots of extra joints. There's lots of utility nodes, constraints, uh, the spline IK, most of that stuff will not work in a game engine. So to get around this problem, I have a game version. Let me quickly load him up. There he is. So this version of the rig is only what we need in the game. It has the geometry, the mesh, and it has forward K only joints. If we open back up the hypergraph, you can see that there's nothing left. 
that will work in a game, that will work on a mobile device much better. For this to work, I needed a way to transfer the animation from the animation rig to this cut down version. For that I wrote a script which I will post on my website, which does the conversion for you. Let's let's load up an animation. Uh, goblin attack. So here we have his basic attack animation. For the script to work, you have to animate with a referenced version. You can see he's referenced in. And it also has to have a namespace. So only he's gob colon. Okay, so it's the script is called import export rig and it takes two parameters the start and end frames of the animation you want to export or if you just type in minus one minus one it will take the entire timeline it then asks you for the uh, the cut down export version which I have here and then it loads it up and transfers the animation so we now have both versions in memory but the animation is on the low-res version. So we can now, if we open up the reference editor, we can unload the reference and we are left with the low-res version with the animation. This can now be exported and put into any game engine. As you can see, let's open this up. That's all we have left. That's about it for this video. In the next one, I'll start at the beginning, show you how to build a skeleton and skin a low-res game character. From there, we'll move on to the animation controls, starting with the spine.